Brian with Kings. And Bill with Ace King in the straddle. Looks like he's just going to call. So he could have seen a big pot blow up pre flop, but you see a single raise pot here. Brian's had some hands tonight. There's two thirds pot here. Bill going to continue once with the Ace King. Five on the turn. Well, certainly have quite a bit of 5x here from the third blind, but could also just have 10x. It is just never folding on this turn. Could have flush draws, straight draws, etc. Imagine Brian just continues betting here for value. Brian, two thirds again. And Bill are going to call. Nice pot, Charles. Well, it's a pre-flop cooler avoided by Bill Klein so far. Um, but on the turn, it's possible he doesn't need to be putting this money in. Let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about Brian's line so far because he's chosen some pretty big sizing post-flop. What do you make of it? Well, the board is not his so much. This 10-5-4, two-hard board on the flop. That hits a lot of Bill's range, and Bill's calling a lot. So the worse the board is for you, the more you want to bet, if you're going to bet. Um, so he makes it more than half pot, which I think is it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I like this bet. Yep, and then he goes big again on the turn. It could be argued that he should check back the turn because the five favors Bill's range, and Bill's going to have trips some of the time. What do you think? I understand that, and I don't think it's crazy, but... This is not the negative event that we'd be most worried about. There's so many worse cards for us on the turn. This is a pretty good card for us, right? Yeah, it's reasonable. An, an eight is bad. A three is bad. A heart is bad. An ace is bad. A 10 is bad. Those are the cards we're most worried about. This is like, okay, he has a trip five sometimes, but he's got a lot of tens. He has a lot of draws. He has fours. It's fine. And we have to have a plan for what, what we're going to do if we get check raised, which depending on the opponent, we're either going to call or fold. Yep. Um, but... I think it's. I think we should be betting this hand most of the time. Yeah, and he sizes it up because uh, he's going to charge the draws a decent amount, and he's going to get called by a ten still when he sizes it this way. So you I might as well is. not go like half pot, go a little bigger. He could even probably go a little bigger than this. Yep. But going for value, should he get the value that Bill gives him here? It's an interesting spot. Okay, in one way, like Bill calls the flop, right? And I think he should call the flop most of the time. He's ahead a lot. If he was ahead a lot on the flop, he's still ahead a lot on the turn. That is true, but you pointed on the podcast correctly that the range of hands we're up against does change pretty dramatically when Brian decides to bet again. Right. He's not just randomly firing off with 8-9 of spades here, most likely. Right. right. Like Usually, if we're ahead, there's equity against us beyond just hitting a pair. It's, it's something a little scarier than that. So our equity against the range is not ideal. I think it might be time to pack it up. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I guess if we've seen Brian double barreling a lot um maybe then we feel like we just we just should call a little bit more but this is not the hand i mostly want to call with we don't have hearts which is good actually it can be good um in this case right because that that keeps all the flush draws alive yeah um we don't block that that's cool we don't block any of the draws in any way that's good too if we had the best hand on the flop we still do that's good too i think it's marginally bad if bad but yeah. i still i think i prefer just to fold i i think i do too i agree with you i think i fold here but I don't think it's awful to call. I think it's at least reasonable. If you want to be reasonable, get on Nitro Betting because it's it's been long enough that you've been unreasonable. You know what I'm saying? But also, if you want to get all unreasonable, get on Nitro Betting. Yeah, if you want to do either thing, anything except for being right in between reasonable yeah. and unreasonable. That's the only thing you can't do. Everything else you can do, it all comes with special promotions. If you use the link in our pinned tweet, those promos are sick. They are crazy. They make you happy. They give you joy. They give you free money. Get in there. Get you some poker, sports betting, casino games, all the good stuff. Into the river. The river is another five. And if Bill thought his ace king high was a bluff catcher before, no need to do anything here but check. Beating the flush draws, beating the straight draws. It seems like he's got other ideas. He's going to lead. Lead for pot here on the river. Yeah. 
If you're Brian, you lose to tens and quad fives. Four of a kind. I would think that trip fives would raise off the turn at some frequency. And tens would three bet. The question is, can you raise for value here? I think it's a little bit thin when Bill pots it on the river after calling two big bets already. Somebody really targeting 10x, maybe? Maybe 10x calls. It looks like Brian is going to raise here. And Brian makes it 50k here, indeed targeting a hand that Bill could have, like Ace 10, Queen 10, Jack 10. And Bill thinking about it. He is thinking about it. I'm not much behind after the raise. It looks like Bill's reaching for chips. And look at this, Bill is going to three bet. This is so strong. Bill is going to three bet all in. So he called a big bet on the flop, called a two thirds pot size bet on the turn, donked for pot on the river. Brian raises 4X and now Bill bet three bets all in. And if you're Brian, you gotta hate this spot. How is Bill ever bluffing? How is he bluffing? How many do I owe you so far? Yeah, I already took that one. If you're Brian, you just got to think this is a five almost all the time. What a bluff from Bill. This would be a really... Uh, Amazing uh, bluff. 10 out of 10. I think Brian's going to fold it. I want to see what choice he has. I'm uh, probably going to fold. I do not think Brian puts in any more chips. Eighty more? Eighty three more, right? thing you're thinking if you are Brian here is would Bill raise off his trip fives on the turn on a wet board I fold only because I have no more money he does fold and Bill shows him the bluff oh baby the rich get richer or I guess in poker chip terms, but we know Bill Klein gives away his profits, so he doesn't oh. actually get Maybe richer. Maybe he gives it to very rich people, though. Oh, okay. Then, <laughs> so yeah. The, rich the charity of, of Elon Musk and Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah. They need more money. Um, anyway, 
How did this happen? Let's go back, starting with the first action. Bill's pot size lead. Make sense of this for me, because this is not the flashiest thing that happens, but it needs to be explored. I don't know at all why Bill would do this. This is a very, very strange bet. Let's think about the hands that Brian is continuing with on the turn here. The range of hands. It's mostly big draws yep. of some sort or tens plus. Yeah, like right? jack 10 plus mostly. Yeah. Jack 10 plus is never folding. Nope. The draws are. Yep. What's what are we? What good things are happening here with Ace King? I I don't. I'm, well, we see we see is, the good thing that okay, happened. Of course, we got fifty k sure. more. We 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 see that now. But at the time, as we're making this bet, especially a pot size bet, which is a polarizing size, it's very odd to me. I would prefer if Bill. I mean, I think a check is great here and makes a lot of sense. But I think if you're gonna bet, even to induce, we should be betting tiny, not big. Let's bet two thousand. And now we're going to put some chum in the water for those heart draws to be like, ah, I got to blow him off his, his weak-ass hand. You know, yeah, and then you can decide to make the hero call if you want to. Right. Uh, instead, this is what happens. Bill makes it 13K. I agree. I don't see the sense in it. But guess what does get to happen? Brian raises to 50K. Yep. Is this wise? I mean, this is exploring the very edges of thin value. In order to make this raise good, what you need to have happen is for Bill to have a 10 yep. and be likely to play a 10 like this and then pay this off. Yes. And that feels like a pretty big set of circumstances coming in. I don't know if it's profitable to make this raise. I think it's questionable at best. Um, this will work against lower quality opponents who are going to lead here, but you need evidence that they lead this kind of a hand in this spot and call the raise. Um, I don't know how often Bill's really going to lead raise or lead call a 10 here. Uh, the lead for pot is already very questionable. I don't see a good player leading a 10 for pot on nope. the river. I don't see why they would. I mean, you'd like to induce if you have a 10. You don't want to chase right. away hands that, that might in, like take a shot at you. I mean, if we, we have to believe that basically pocket eights bet the turn from Brian's point of view, which is at least possible. Possible, but unlikely. Pocket nines. Um, and then are going to call because all the draws missed. Yeah. That's what we're getting value out of. That's about it. It's like those pocket pairs. Which I don't really see Brian betting on the turn anyway. I mean, the five is such a bad card for those hands. Um, I don't know for sure if he is betting that or not, but it's it doesn't seem great to bet. There are also most of those block the straight draws, by the way, which isn't great either. Some of those anyway. So I think what's happening here is Brian is exploring the bounds of thin value, which as a good player who's trying to play for a yes. living, you're supposed to do. Yes. I just wonder if it's a bit too thin. Uh, of course, it all comes down to if Bill would ever actually play a 10 like this, and we don't know the answer. Maybe he would. If, as Brian, we've seen Bill play a 10 like this, you know, leading suddenly with top loss and then call, not top, but the, the full house, and then calling the raise and getting, and you know, and losing here, um, great then we can do this sometimes. Right? Yeah, I just don't think it's likely. Yeah. But, you know, I get why you go for thin value. You're trying to go for thin value. It's fine. This time it really didn't work out because Bill then three bets all in for uh, 127K. The pain! Which everybody on the internet is talking about like the best play in the history of poker, but I actually think it's kind of bad. Doesn't Brian have some fives, bro? I mean, doesn't he have a lot of fives when he has value? I mean, I guess he has some bluffs when we get him off of those. But guess what? We win against the bluffs with Ace King. We can call if we think he has bluffs. Yep. Now, if we're going to give Bill a lot of credit, we can say that maybe he's played with Brian enough to know that Brian explores the edges of thin value a yes. bit too much. Yes. And he's going to put all of those thin value hands in the blender with this. The problem is that Brian opened from the cutoff and can definitely have a five and has done nothing up to this point to indicate that he does not have a five. Yeah, to be clear, like ace five suited, five six suited, five seven suited. Maybe, maybe king five suited. Maybe king five suited. Maybe eight five suited. Yeah. That's a bunch of fives, man. By the way, four five, which right. is a full house on the turn and now is quads. Absolutely. Maybe three five suited even. Yeah, I think it's a really scary range to three bet all in for 127K for against... I. It's, it's like we have to know that Brian is raising for thin value and only for thin value and never actually has a five, which yeah. seems impossible. Yeah. So I can give Bill enough credit to say maybe he's seen Brian raise for thin value in spots like this before. That doesn't mean this is a good spot to attack that. Here's the crazy thing. When we were talking about this on our podcast, we were discussing what other hands could Brian raise for value. And one of us said, like, well, obviously 10's full. And then we actually started to talk about it. We're like, but then you block a 10... Yeah. Bill even having a 10. So what are you supposed to get called by now? There's one 10 left in the deck. There's one five left left in the deck. So it's like 50-50, and we don't know for sure he's calling with the 10. We're always getting raised by the five. I mean, what are we doing here? Like, yeah. Maybe you can't even raise 10s full profitably. Maybe not. Which sounds crazy, but Bill bet pot. Yep. 
And then he went all in, and it works. Uh, I mean, it's, I, it's kind of beautiful, even though it's probably not. Probably. It, it has to work once we're here. Brian cannot call, right? Oh, oh, I don't see how he could ever call. This. Yeah, so good for Bill for getting it through. I just think it got a little overly ambitious, and he got a little lucky that Brian was on this side of his play right now. Yep. Woo-wee, what a hand that turned out to be. We thought pretty much all the river decisions were questionable at best and maybe just not good. So let us know what you guys think about this. Do you agree with us? Do you think like Bill shouldn't be leading pot on the river? Brian shouldn't be raising and Bill certainly shouldn't be shoving. Um, also, we just assume Brian folding was, was normal and obvious, but maybe you disagree with that too. Just weigh in. Let us know. Weigh in on Discord also. There's a link in the description. We'll see you there.